February 14th, 2013. Happy Valentine's Day. I got a special candy bar, and it says on it, uh, you're one in a billion. And this is uh, for my partner. I'm going to dedicate this uh, this episode to him. I haven't talked much about him, but uh, 30 years, 30 years, this last October, we've been together. That's uh, it's a mighty long time. Uh, it's amazing how you can find somebody in your life, and if you uh, know what you're doing, you'll hang on to them uh, because they're, it's very, very rare uh, to find find uh, your better half, your compatible. Um, lots, lots of things to say. I remember when we first. Uh, first got together, uh, he made it very clear that uh, I can't fight you and the world at the same time, but if we stand back to back, back to back, we're like a double-edged sword, mm -hmm. there's nothing that will be put in front of us that we can't conquer. And uh, with that, uh, we hit it off, and uh, we're still going, and uh, I just have to say, if, uh, Someone can still make you laugh after 30 years. You're doing, you're doing something right. It was um, unusual because uh, I did move up to Minnesota where he lived. Uh, it was a, kind of a long distance relationship. Uh, recorded, writing letters back and forth, uh, talked to each other on the phone a lot, and he just finally, finally invited me up and said, "Come up and visit if you like it." Uh, We'll go from there. And I did. I came up to visit. And uh, actually, when I did come up to visit, uh, we went and looked at a house. And he says, uh, <laughs> and, and he, you need to have to see this house. He said, if, you, if I buy this house, will you move up? And I went, yeah. <laughs> but the house was, because um, he, he was doing very well at the time, uh, I have to say. But the house was uh, uh, Country Club Terrace. It was uh, in between the golf course and the lake. Uh, he was very, very smart, very intelligent, well-dressed, mannered, uh, very successful businessman. His, his office was uh, in the professional building down on Main Street. Uh, he had optical and hearing and, uh, and several sub-offices. Uh, I remember when I first moved up, he had one in uh, Wilmer there was his base, but uh, then there was Litchfield, St. Cloud, uh, Glen, Glenville, and there was another one. Um, he had five five offices at the time in hearing aids, and then he uh, got the optical and, and uh, worked that for a bit. Uh, got to, got to see got to see the professional side of him, and. Uh, it's been a, been a really wild, wild and crazy ride uh, over the 30 years. I really have uh, been lucky, lucky. Uh, and uh, I was talking a little bit yesterday about you know you kind of uh, have, a, have a premonition, uh, something, and, and and they do say that you know you know you know right away. And I remember when I first seen him uh, standing there. Who is this man? Who is it? And then uh, over a period of time, watching him, how he mingled, and uh, people would kind of swarm around him and get to, get to know him. I was kind of hesitant at first, but uh, over over a few days, and I finally approached him and, and uh, talked a lot, and, and uh, I was hooked. I was hooked. But he, he really uh, came into my life at a very important time. I really needed, uh, I needed uh, not only an escape, but I needed, I needed someone to, uh, to, uh, to lift me out of uh, the spiral that I was heading into. Uh, he was kind of like that uh, uh, knight and on the white horse that comes in to save you at the last minute. He uh, really, really pulled some strings and got me out of a jam. And uh, it's really
really hard to say what what my life would have been like if I would have seen Oklahoma. But uh, there's just a lot of things going on, and, and I'll talk about them later. But uh, uh, it was I always grew up wanting one things that I wished for most out of all the things uh, was not to be alone. I did not want to be alone. Uh, even though I lived in a family and had a mother and a father and a brother and a wife, I felt alone all those years. And uh, when he came along, it was it was it. It was, uh, it was uh, uh, and like any relationship, it takes uh, it takes dedication, it takes work on both parts. But uh, thirty years, think about it, thirty years. Uh, started out and, and uh, uh, like I said, uh, just writing, talking, uh, moving up uh, to Minnesota. Uh, the way I explain it is that uh, why, why, why wouldn't you? I mean, if I if I w had been a girl, I was trying to explain this to my mom. If I'd been a girl, I met a guy that was a doctor and was a professional and had businesses and, and had that house by the. Uh, by the lake and by the golf course, uh, and really made it. Would he be um, happy for me? Uh, but uh, it took it took my mother quite quite a long time to come come around. He was always known as my man friend, <laughs> but uh, it finally he she finally came around. I think after uh, you know, because she, she was single single for 25 years after my. Uh, after uh, she divorced, uh, divorced my dad, and uh, she finally met, uh, you know, her her better half, and uh, just like a, you know, they say, two peas in a pod, or there's a there's a, a lid for every pot, and and she finally met that person that that uh, that, she, that she was looking for all her life. I th I, do, I do believe, but uh, she finally she finally came around when she got married uh, to John. Uh, I was really surprised that when we went down to the uh, to the wedding that uh, she introduced uh, Gordon as, as her son-in-law. Uh, this is my son-in-law. So that was very. Uh, I knew she'd barely she'd finally come around, seeing that you know my happiness and, and longevity of things that were, uh, was important important to me. He was important to me, and I think uh, she realized that. Uh, what he had done for me over the years, and uh, I think that was uh, my my uh, crowning moment was uh, when uh, she accepted him. Um, but uh, at, at the same time, when I moved up, uh, it uh, it took a bit. But uh, I remember Grandpa Frankie uh, really really uh, think uh, would uh, I'd hear from uh, the brother-in-law. That uh, that uh, he he stands up he stood up for me a lot uh, and no one could talk bad about Ray uh, he really respected me of course I ain't gonna him every reason to uh, but uh, he I mean even um, even one of the, the brother-in-laws said that at the funeral that I should have I should have been there because he probably would have wanted me wanted me to be there I was like uh, one of the sons but uh, work work was important work came first. And uh, that's what I did. But uh, I really felt welcome uh, in, in to his family. Uh, very open arms. Uh, like I said, Minnesota is very liberal, so it wasn't wasn't an issue at all. And I think he set the. Uh, you know, telling him, telling me that he set the ground right away. That uh, don't uh, don't uh, give him give him any hassle. And uh, they never did. But um, 30 years. No, I'm just gonna briefly go over. <sighs> Moved up and lived in Wilmer for two years, and then we went on a uh, 